Investing in the first half of 2022 has been ugly. The total U.S. stock index is down about 20%, international 18%, and even the total U.S. bond index is down 11%. To make it even worse, inflation for the 12 months ending in May 2022 was 8.6%. Not only are investments losing money, the value of money itself is dropping at about three to four times the typical rate. Many people are expecting inflation to continue, interest rates to continue rising, layoffs to increase, and they believe we are headed for a recession. In this type of environment, many investors are worried and wondering what they should do. I've heard many people talking about decreasing stock exposure, pausing new investments, and holding cash or possibly gold in the meantime. This is market timing. Study after study shows that investors are terrible at market timing. Between 2001 and 2020, the average investor earned a 2.9% return, underperforming every single asset class. This is market timing in action. Between 2002 and 2021, 80 to 95% of active money managers underperformed index funds. A Fidelity study showed that between 1980 and 2020, missing just the five best days in 40 years resulted in missing nearly 40% of the total market return, while missing just the best 10 days missed half of the total market return. One Schwab study showed perfect market timing barely outperformed simply investing immediately. All the data tells us that the risk of being wrong with market timing can destroy your overall returns, while the upside of perfect timing isn't that much better. The data shows professionals fail at market timing, and that the average investor got a worse return than every asset class in one of the biggest bull markets in history. In spite of all this evidence, many investors believe that they are the exception or that a little market timing is good when we are certainly heading for a recession. I wish these people luck, they need it. Not even professionals at the Fed, major banks, or hedge funds can accurately predict markets or the economy. I think it helps to go back to first principles and consider why we invest and what our goals are. Most people are investing to help fund future innovation and grow or preserve their wealth over time. One of the best ways to do this has been to invest in businesses. If you own a successful business that consistently grows and generates profits, why do you care if the market is currently valuing that business at 20 to 40% less than it did six months ago? You may be retiring soon, need the money from your portfolio, you may be worried the market may not recover soon, or you may have overestimated your risk tolerance in one of the biggest bull markets ever. If this is you, I think you should revisit your investment strategy and create one that better aligns with your personality and goals. I have other videos detailing assessing your risk tolerance and creating an investment strategy. I'll link them up here and below. The type of market conditions we have now are very common and they occur regularly. I believe your investment strategy should be designed to prepare for these so that nothing changes. Most people fail at market timing, so the best thing, in my opinion, is to accept economic cycles and design a strategy you are comfortable with. If you are investing for the long term, short term changes in market prices don't really matter. The fundamentals of the businesses and global economies are what matter. Surely, business profits could decrease for a few months or a couple years, but I believe in the global economy long term. If you consider how much we have advanced in the past 100 years, living standards have increased significantly, healthcare is advancing, poverty has dramatically declined, leisure time has increased, Share of income spent on food has gone down. Life expectancy is going up. Homicide rates have fallen. 
More of the world lives in democracy. More people are going to school for longer. Literacy is at all-time highs. Access to information is continuing to increase globally, and global equity markets have delivered average annual returns of around 7 to 10% for decades. I am optimistic the next 100 years will be even better. I think it's important to be careful about the data you consume and thoughts you entertain. Is focusing on the upcoming recession a productive thing to do? I'd rather focus on the phenomenal progress our society has made. I don't see why I would sell or delay investing in what I believe will be a better future. Just because I fear it could get a little worse in the coming months or that I may get a larger discount than is currently there. What are the alternatives if you don't invest in this future? You can sit in cash, which has lost value basically every single year in the past 100 years, and is currently losing 8.6% of its value in the past year. You can buy short-term government bonds, which are currently yielding 2.8%, but have lost 3.2% of their value year to date, and you'll have to pay taxes on that 2.8% interest. Maybe you could buy some I-bonds, which should provide interest comparable to inflation. But you have to pay taxes, so you're guaranteed to lose real value with those two. Surely I would hold some bonds in a diversified portfolio, but I find stocks far more attractive considering my optimism for the future of our economy. One measure people use to determine if stocks are cheap is the cyclically adjusted price to earnings ratio, the CAPE ratio. Here are the CAPE ratios for the US, Europe, Japan, and China. Aside from the US, global markets are cheap compared to the long-term trends. Sure, the US may be a bit expensive right now, but I don't really concern myself much with this. I think people are letting their emotions get the better of them and missing the forest for the trees. In an 80-year lifespan, does it really matter if we're going into a recession in the next couple years? I feel just as bad as anyone else when I see my portfolio value drop dramatically, but I think it's important to reflect on the data about market timing, our investment strategy, and our beliefs about the long-term prospects of the global economy. Hindsight is always 2020, and the best we can do is make decisions with the information we have at the time. I believe the best decision is to avoid market timing, follow my investment strategy, regardless of what emotions I'm feeling, and bet on the future of our global economy. I try to avoid letting my mind get polluted with things that don't really matter so I can focus on building my skills and enjoying my life. It's far better to spend time with friends, a hobby, or make yourself more valuable. The one thing I'm doing differently is watching my spending a little more so I can invest more while we have lower prices. I have been following my investment strategy and buying the equivalent of the total world stock index every paycheck. If the market drops, I'll keep buying more. Is there really a better alternative? That's up for you to decide, but I don't believe there is. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like the video and share my channel with your friends. Later.